Welcome to the Neighborhood Church Revive Podcast. We're so glad that you're joining us today as we unpack big ideas about God's Word together. My name is Sean Thomas. I'm an associate campus pastor here at Neighborhood Church, and we believe that God's Word is relevant and helpful even for today, which is why we take the time to unpack what we talked about Sunday mornings and just life in general and are joining you guys uh, listening today. Well, today we got the regular crew back. We have Pastor Mike McKay. Hey, how did, how are you doing? <laughs> Good. Good to hear you. Uh, we also have Mr. Justin McKeldery. Good to be here, Sean. Yeah, yeah. And I'm joining you guys as always. And we are uh, making our way through the Planet series. We still got a, a couple weeks left um, yeah, before the holidays, before we wrap up. But today, or, or well, Sunday was a bit of a unique celebration service for both campuses. We did some unique things. If you guys didn't see the services or weren't there, uh, you can find them on YouTube. Maybe check them out. We did a live painting at Cypress at Los Al, there was a lot of music and testimonies. And so we kind of took a time out of the usual formula, uh, although we talked about a lot of similar things, but we were more expressive, maybe more creative in our faith. And guys, that might have been a little outside of the box for some people, but I think if we look at church history, there's a lot of creativity and a lot of maybe different ways of worshiping and expressing our faith to God that happens that we were engaging with this past week. Yeah, I think I had just one person thank me for our, ours was not nearly as creative as yours, but we did mix it up. We had some testimonies and someone just appreciated the change of pace, that it was that it was different, that we've done it like similar before, similarly before, but just that change for them was refreshing. There might be other people for, it was a little bit, you know, threw them off their, their liturgy, yeah. but you know, it's good from time to time. So yeah, tradition is good at, uh, to help us grow, but yeah. also the, to throw in a few, uh, new things, you know, all throughout the Psalms, it talks about sing to the Lord, a new song. Mm -hmm. And the yeah. reason why is because it, it just, activates different part of our brains and with especially with the art thing that and you guys uh we did we've done this both at our los al campus and now this time yeah. last week at our cypress campus but it ignites a whole new part of the brain it, yeah when you look at that but it, god made us that way and yeah. i mean just you look at the canvas that he's created here in our world yeah i mean just to go outside and look at the variety of plants and animals and trees and all kinds of different yeah. things you know you stand on the edge of the grand canyon and you have a worship experience yeah totally because you see the vastness of god or hear the crashing waves of the ocean and yeah or you know witness a powerful lightning storm and you just you just like you're in awe of god yeah it's it's interesting it's so part of uh, my studies at uh, at Talbot when I went to seminary um, uh, so I have an arts background I, I think some people know that but if you guys don't know that was my undergrad and when I was at uh, seminary I asked them if I could um, for my uh, a culmination class, basically, if I could do some sort of art practice. Unfortunately, I couldn't <laughs> because they're an academic institute, but they did let me um, study aesthetics. And I read a guy, um, Hans von Balthasar. He's a, a Catholic. That's a name. Yeah, I know. I've heard the name, but I don't remember anything about him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's a 20th century Catholic theologian um, that does this like huge nine volume opus, Justin, you need to add it to your library uh, on, on creativity. Um, oh, and wow. He, yeah. And, and he talks about what Mike was talking about, kind of um, how aesthetics and beauty is woven into creation itself, nature, uh, symmetry and people. And um, uh, it's just, it's it's amazing that we're hardwired to notice things. Oh, and, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, we're, we're, we, you know, we're made in the likeness of God. Now we we don't create something out of nothing like yeah. God does, but we yeah. we but we are creative. And I love when people say I'm not creative. Oh, say, yes, you are. Yeah. I actually took a class in um and to, to get some units to, to graduate <clears throat> uh, my undergrad. It was the theory and process of accessing creativity. Oh, well, that's pretty cool. And it, was, <laughs> and it was all about how to kind of boom be creative yeah. and uh, <laughs> and and how to access that part of your brain yeah. and. Uh, there's things you can do to to one of them is to do what we just did, you know, yeah. to to um, uh, try something new. Yeah. So if you haven't painted, paint. If you haven't tried poetry, try right. to write some poetry. Yeah. If you haven't, you know, tried some new things, you know, get outside, look at the, you know, look at yeah. a leaf up close, and yeah. and uh, and things like that. Be observant. Yeah. 
it's it's interesting i was i was thinking about um on the way uh here to the studio here to record i was thinking about in art history you know there's uh, in more modern art it gets more abstract and things like that um and it seems to kind of coincide with um, uh, the modernist, uh, you know, scientific revolution. You know, as as the culture scientifically got more data driven and more intellectual, it seemed like the creative arts got more expressive, you know, mm-hmm. and more um, colorful, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was thinking about it, like with with a leaf. When you look at something up close, it seemed like the art world was atomizing a lot of what once was the norm. Mm -hmm. We think of classical, of of Renaissance, very realistic or or Mm hyper-realistic and hyper-beautiful. But, you know, even as we, uh, in the scientific revolution, as we got more kind of thoughtful on how the universe is made, we also became kind of thoughtful on how we express just Mm -hmm. people in general. Um, And I think that's beautiful, Mike, like you say, like for us as believers, like, we can be thoughtful in our process. And Justin, you were talking about earlier uh, before we started recording the Psalter. We were looking at the Psalms. You guys looked at Psalm mm-hmm. 150. Right. We looked at Psalm 1 mm-hmm. and and you were kind of telling us, you know, this is the breadth of the Psalms, you know, it's all about glorifying God in unique and different ways. Right, yeah. Well, I, I just, I, I wrapped up with Psalm 150 and just said, this isn't the end of the just Psalm 150, it's the end of the Psalter. And then I, we went back and read Psalm 1, and it talks about, you know, <clears throat> being in the Word, who you, the company you keep, being rooted and strengthened and, you know, bearing fruit and all of that. And, yeah. um, and then you go throughout the Psalms on this journey of all kinds of stuff. You know, there's, there's grief, there's sorrow, there's, there's anger, there's just the whole range of human emotions. It's really this odyssey of discipleship and engaging God and others um, throughout that. And then, but it culminates in delight. Like that's what Psalm 150 is all about is you praise God because he's good. You praise God for the good things he's done and you praise him with all available resources. You know, I mean, it just <laughs> yeah. goes through a list yeah. of, of uh, several instruments in, and then it adds dance in case you can't do an instrument, you know, so yeah, it can um, move around. So, yeah, so it's just a, it's just a phenomenal picture of, it's a great culmination piece and, a, and even a creative one at that, but yeah. of really, you know, wrapping up a life um, well lived yeah. and, and, a life of discipleship that's not just grinding day to day, yeah. but there's space for delight, I think is really what I wanted to bring out of that. And I'm glad that- Well, I was going to say this, this whole series that we've been going through, it's the, on Sunday morning, it's called Planted. Yeah. And then there's a daily devotional called Rooted. Yeah. The Rooted daily devotional through all its weeks is is concluded, but we're still yeah. continuing on with the Planted series because the reality is, is we want to continue to uh, cultivate this environment for God to grow us. Yeah. And, you know, you, you were talking on Sunday about, you know, now what, what next, you know, yeah, and yeah. how to let the expressions of life, you know, be open to what God is going to challenge you with and, yeah. and using Psalm 1, you know, don't sit, stand, walk in the council of wicked, but, yeah. but place yourself in, 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 in the, grow your roots down deep yeah. into God's word. And cause, cause our, our, uh, our, I don't want to call it fear, but the tendency is that if we don't continue in that, we'll we won't grow as well. You know, mm. in the Bible book of the Revelation, um, it talks about some churches and that's gatherings of people yeah. that have had trouble. And you know, yeah. one of them was they got lukewarm. You know, they kind of just, bleh, you know, they yeah. they weren't uh, uh, really on fire for the Lord or against the Lord. They just kind of existed. And I think <laughs> that's the if we don't keep it fresh, yeah. Yeah. Just like any relationship, you know, if you don't keep yeah. it fresh, it, it, there's excitement in there. And God has provided rhythms for that, you know, yeah. uh, taking a, a weekly rhythm of taking mm. one day and try to pull away from and relax from all the other things you strive after and yeah. focus on God and and make that. And actually, Hebrew worship was a lot more sensory mm. than even... Uh, Later, uh, maybe more Greek t- style worship yeah. was more heady. Yeah, yeah, and, more logical. And, yeah, or, more logical. Yeah. I mean, you need a balance of both, but yeah. it's it, there's a, you know, when you walk into the tabernacle or the temple uh, in the Old Testament, that you know, you smell things, you see things, you hear mm-hmm. things, yeah. all those kind of things as you're experiencing God. Yeah, it's a more sensory uh, time of reflection, and I yeah. think that 
you know, it's not all just reading verses and praying. Though that now that's important. Yeah, yeah, totally. Because yeah. the word of God is the authority. Yeah. But there's also experiencing the grandeur of God by going on a hike. Yeah. You know, and seeing the the intricate details and de- and 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 creativeness of God by watching bugs and how they work and <laughs> yeah. those kind of things and just having that moment where you're reflecting on the things that are around us. Yeah. What for you guys? What are maybe some places in the world that you've been, or whether it's a hike? And Mike, uh, yesterday in the service, I loved how you talked about the Grand Canyon and yeah. standing. But for you guys, like, what are some places where you have been that you've just been stopped by the awe and wonder of of God or this creation? Um, for me, Grand Tetons. Um, I don't know, just outside of Yellowstone. I don't know whether you didn't say Mount Rainier, Wyoming, or my. That's I see that all the time. So well, no, no, I see it occasionally when it's not cloudy. Yes, you know. So um, oh yeah, okay, that makes so, sense. Yeah, there's a there's a, there's a right? yeah 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 there's a phrase the mountains out. Yeah. You know, it's <laughs> because <laughs> which basically means the clouds are gone um, <clears throat> for that which little window rare. of time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So but um, but no the. Um, the Grand Tetons. And I remember I went to Yellowstone with my dad in high school, me and my brother did. And I wasn't that interested overall, mm. but those were stunning to me. And mm. so we just went back a couple summers ago and I'm like, this is just, I have a picture of them in my, in my office. Like they're just yeah. so breathtaking, you know? I mean, there's other things that are more like, um, anybody, you go to an, any national park. I mean, oh, yeah. even, and you're even, and I'm even surprised. Like we went to, Joshua Tree a couple Thanksgivings ago, mm. and I was like, eh, okay, it's something to do. And, and desert stuff just doesn't do it for me, but I yeah. went, and I was like, this is amazing, you know? Yeah. So I think the the woods, those kinds of things are what do it for me consistently, but I think just slowing down enough to give something a chance, mm. um, like Mike saying, even your local park and look at a yeah. leaf, you know, yeah. or, um, but, but yeah, the, the, when the big stuff, it's the Tetons. Yeah. <laughs> Romans one twenty says for his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world mm. in the things that have been made. Mm. And that's, you know, that, that, when you see the the vastness of you know the desert or yeah. the the you know you go take a mask and snorkel and go to Hawaii and go down into the yeah. do a little snorkeling and just Whole see the world. array of fish yeah. and all the wonders and hear the sounds of the clicky 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 in your yeah. ears and you you know you enjoy that and I mean there are so many places that just take me in awe and you know those uh, that Justin has mentioned and. Zion mm. to me was uh, yeah. like an eye overload. Wow, <laughs> uh, Zion National yeah. Park. You drive down into there and you see the red rock and the green uh, pines, and you're just you're yeah. just. It's almost like it's too much. You can't take mm. it in. And then you see all the uniqueness of that. And I just, God just might have had fun when He created yeah. these things or allowed the yeah. earth to create the way it did, and yeah. and that, and you know. All those kind of things. Any kind of tropical thing does it for me. Yeah, seeing the beauty there, and I uh, lived in Alaska for a while, so that oh gosh, is just the amazing. the the Arctic uh, tundra. And I mean, not I've, you know, I've been way up north, but even just in in the middle area of Fairbanks where we lived, and just the forest that you can run through as a kid mm-hmm. and see the different animals that are there and the flying yeah. squirrels and the <laughs> lynx and the moose. I got chased to swim practice by a moose one time. <laughs> Sheesh. Yeah. It was, Those that, things no, are terrifying. The, that is terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, I don't know if you've ever met a, like, you've ever met like a moose at night. Nine feet tall or something. <laughs> yeah, like. yeah, and there's nostrils. It was a mama moose, and I was, and we were between the mama and the baby, and that's dangerous. Shoo. Anyway, so we ran into this other one, and then you just, you know, the the smoke coming out of her, her nostrils. <laughs> and she, she went, ah! This is like a ring wraith. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but it's you know, but even in that, you just think the the incredibleness of God and the creation that He's put together, and and to me also when I've you know looked down at uh, one of our ten grandkids mm. specifically, I mean even at now of course, but when they were first born, yeah, and to be able to hold them in your arms and just see the wonder of God's creation, the mm. little fingers and toes and <laughs> nose, and just, you're just in awe. Yeah. It's, it's amazing too that, you know, I mean, speaking, you know, 
baby to adult, we have a lifespan as, as humans, you know, ever since we were created, but also just the progress of humans. And, and even the more advanced that we've become, you know, you think of flight, space travel, it seems like every time we see something new that only God could have seen mm-hmm. since creation. It's just now in the last hundred years, 200 years that we're finally catching up, but yet we're still seeing, you know, when you see a landscape from, you know, 10,000 feet and how unique, but how simple and patchwork it looks like mm-hmm. a quilt. Yeah. And then you see these amazing nebulae. We have the James Webb, you know, telescope that was just launched this year. And it's like an amazing abstract painting. So colorful. And it's like, wow, we're, we're every step that we think we've taken this uh, monumental step in human evolution. It's like, we're just getting a little glimpse of what God has always seen. You know, yeah. that's amazing. That, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so you guys listening at home, I encourage you guys, go take a walk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Think about or list those aha moments, those wonder moments that you have, even if it's, you know, in when your kids were born, you know, and, you know, your son scores a basket in basketball or something, you know, those feelings that you yeah. get, those, yeah. you know, like senses of wonder. Um, Justin, you mentioned something that was awesome, delight, mm-hmm. and and that that is part. That's the culmination of the Psalms going through the breadth of human emotion, but ending in delight. And and one of the things, Mike, you were talking about, we talked about in Cyprus uh, yesterday. What what next? What do I do now? Kind of a purpose question. Um, and there was a quote, and I. I don't mean to throw you under the bus, Justin. I, I talked about Justin and I are theological nerds, I guess you might okay. say. Like Justin, now I'm a, nervous. I don't know where no, this is no, going. No, no, no. I just I was just saying at the Cypress campus, Justin and I nerd out on theology. I mentioned the uh, Westminster Catechism. Oh, okay. You know, the chief end of man, yeah. right? Yeah. Is to glorify God. Yeah, and yeah. enjoy him. Enjoy him forever. Yeah. Yes. Oh, so that's what I was saying. Justin knows this. Did you do the John Piperized version of that? No. Oh, is that? yeah. His is to glorify God by enjoying him forever. Yeah. There you go. Oh, so, yeah. That's next level. Oh, yeah, man, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Another yeah. sermon. <laughs> anyway, so, but there's this sense of enjoyment that mm-hmm. sometimes we miss out on. You know, when I when I think, I got to root and I got to work and mm-hmm. I got to like right. make this happen. Um, and and it, it definitely check out. Uh, if you guys listening to us are in the area, Mike is going to preach on, I think, abiding, right? How do you abide? And that's something that we need to be mindful yeah, John about. 15. Yes. Yeah, yeah, like that, you know, being planted isn't just on Sundays or like an occasional thing, but it ought to be an ongoing thing. And part of that is enjoyment and delighting in the Lord. It's not a, um, a, a burdensome task. It's a joyful relationship like mm-hmm. we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah and that's, it's the... It's the cultivating. Yeah, yeah. You know, in this planted, rooted, yeah. growing, metaphor. fruit, fruit bearing yeah. more metaphor. <laughs> I mean, it was just hilarious because I, I just did this and I have plants in my office. I love plants. Yeah. And uh, and so I was cultivating the soil because after you yeah. water it a bunch of time, it gets packed in, and you need to kind of Till cultivate it. so more yeah. oxygen gets in there and the water gets down to the right roots and stuff yeah. like that. In the same way, we need to <clears throat> cultivate the soil of our spiritual life. Yeah, yeah. And times of reflection, times of retreat, mm. you know, going someplace, uh, times of vacation, times of trying something new, mm. those yeah. all cultivate the soil in your life and allow kind of the water, the, 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 the living water of the Spirit to kind of move down into a different area and expand something in a different way and be able to grow in a different way and, you know, having... My little, my, the McKay orchards, <laughs> which is like yes. two trees at home. Uh, you know, it takes it takes some cultivating and yeah. doing that to, to get, bear good fruit, pruning and things yeah, like that. Yeah, and there's there's what's great as God's gi- and, yeah, and yeah. what's God's given us the Holy Spirit, mm. who is our best life coach ever, <laughs> who challenges us in these areas and sometimes yeah. moves us into these uncomfortable zones. Uh, even like, you know, painting and I was watching people while you were doing the art, just seeing, yeah. what are they thinking? You know, and some, yeah. some are like, I'm not sure about this. I came to church yeah, yeah, and yeah. learn the God. God's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not to sit there and watch some guy paint yeah. who looks a little bit like Bob Ross. You know what I mean? It's, <laughs> So Should have grown the beard so you could have Bob Ross. I know. More so. have, picked out his hair. You did perfect. <laughs> Happy trees. That's yeah. right. Yeah. 
can I ask you a question, Sean? Oh, sorry, Mike, were you? Yeah, I'm done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. I, I, um, cause I know you run this, so I don't know if I can ask questions, but uh, I, I, and this might be a little uh, ignorant cause it's an art question. So redirect me as needed, but even, and I think it bounces off what Mike said, I, I think, but one of the things that I see or see with my limited understanding of art is there's this kind of pushing of boundaries and maybe that's not everyone, but that's yeah. a lot. And then how do you navigate that? And maybe it's not essential, but how do you navigate that in such a way that you don't push too far? And I'm speaking, yeah. I guess, as someone who's seeking to be faithful to the word and, yeah. and, and whatnot. So how do you, yeah, I'll just that's, say navigate that yeah. and throw it in your lap and let you, Interpret yeah. and answer. <laughs> <laughs> Gulp? No, no. Yeah. Well, I think that's a good question because I feel like when Mike was talking a moment ago about, you know, the Holy Spirit is our life coach and we're meant we're, – we're sensate beings, right? We, we have <laughs> – touch, smell, this, you know, all of our senses and we're meant to engage in that. And I think even food – uh, sensuality, you know, there, there's a, a time and a place, and then there's a thresholds that sometimes we push up against, but then there's hedonism, you know, mm -hmm. and, and there's and there's a spectrum. And I think right. that's something with art too. There's there's exploring, there's color, there's wrestling with ideas and concepts, but um, but then you go into a territory of shock. Mm -hmm. for the sake of shock right right um it, you know there's pieces that i don't know if i want to really talk about here but there's some very insulting pieces right. that that people have made for, for artistic license you know right. um but really the um the point of that was to be offensive mm -hmm. um but if you take a step back from that there is a point where it's like and we were even talking about it at, uh, on sunday morning like we're here at church, the kids, I was encouraging them. I was like, you are here asking questions. Sometimes you might doubt, sometimes you're wrestling with a question, but you're still here being present. You're not like a tumbleweed, I was using the metaphor, sowing death and destruction, mm -hmm. just kind of wanton questioning. And I feel like an artist too, a responsible artist, will wrestle with something, will maybe create something provocative to elicit a conversation, but it's not out of a spirit of offense or just mm. a, a, of wanton shock um and and i and to take it out of a, a visual art world I, I think of films right we talk about film a lot and how we're, we're interested in film I, I really think there's some filmmakers who um are out to hurt their audiences mm. by films that they make as opposed to like hey let's wrestle with an idea it might not be an idea that i right think is is a good idea but at least they're wrestling with it and inviting an audience okay. and that might be a little abstract but i think no i think threshold. i think that's really helpful for how we can think about things that might be intended we might receive it as hey that's intended to jar me or hurt me yeah um but i think and maybe that's the case but maybe it would do us well to stop and pause and say well is this something worth wrestling with? It might be something that's settled for us, but yeah. it can maybe help us get our arms around how we might um, walk through a conversation with someone we love who maybe is struggling the same yeah. way the artist is and to see these artists as people who are in process as opposed to just yeah. – um, whatever the product itself is. I don't know. I, I don't know. It's an interesting question to no, me. And I, I, I love what you're saying because something that immediately comes to mind, there's a few artists um, who um, are Christian faithful artists and they actually uh, depict Christ uh, in uh, different nationalities. Mm -hmm. There's a series of Christ as an Asian person, mm -hmm. as a black person, as a white person, as, right. you know, an ancient Arab, per, you know, mm -hmm. and so, and some people that's offensive if they right. see a, a, a black depiction of Christ, mm -hmm. maybe it's at first jarring. That's right. not right, you know, right. <laughs> but I think that's a good, what you're saying, Justin, yeah. that's great. It's provocative. It's like, okay, how can we be gracious as an audience, mm -hmm. um, but also hold true to our convictions? And that's the tension of life, I think, whenever right. we're living yeah. in a Christian life. Well, and, and creativity pushes the bounds. Yeah. And I think we just we all need to be careful not to push beyond God's bounds. Yeah. Right? Yes. You know his, and I think that there's plenty to be creative in. I mean, Jesus even did a little bit of shock and awe. Yeah. You know, some yeah. of the miracles he did are like what? Yeah. Yeah. It got or, got people's attention. You yeah. Know? Working on the Sabbath. What? Yeah. 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 <laughs> and some of it could because the the lines that people had drawn yeah. were not of God. Yeah. 
and uh, you know we can we can be creative and express without hurting. Yes, I think and I think that yeah. that you know some of the the shocking art and things. The, the motive is not pure like Christ's motive. Mm-hmm. The motive is I want to get more likes. I want to get more attention. Yes. I want to get more media on my stuff. Yeah. So I'm going to say something that's way out there or What's do the something or show it? something. Or, yeah. You know, and that's, <clears throat> you know, I mean, every, but, you know, you look at, uh, uh, you know, the, the Michelangelo and did st- the stuff that he did was all church art. You yeah, know, a yeah. lot of it was most of it was to yeah. art, and it was outside the box. Mm, yeah, and he that. did get criticized for it, and yeah. even the church said, well, "How could you do that?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yet, yet it's some of those things that we have now are are very godly, yeah, venerated, and yeah. beautiful things that that show a a worship that you couldn't see otherwise. Yeah. So. Well, guys, I hate to, to wrap up. <laughs> Maybe we'll do a part two next week, actually. This is a really <laughs> cool conversation. But any last thoughts before we wrap it up? We're up against it here. But Yeah, I just to say again that we are all seeking to grow as best as we can through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And part of that is cultivating the soil and yeah. getting out there and trying some new things and expressing, obviously, mm-hmm. within the bounds of Scripture and, yeah. and, uh, and seeing life a little differently and try different expressions of worship and yeah. and and that and and I think that brings a freshness into the air of our own spiritual growth and there's some excitement there. Yeah. yeah. No, and I think you know I, I when I asked that question I felt like I had the moment had passed initially but I think in my mind the answer was a little bit of what Mike was talking about that's why I brought it back out um, was that it's that being grounded in the word, mm-hmm. being yeah. it, being shaped by the word that allows us because the the word does and, and Christ came to set us free, yeah. but it's not the freedom to indulge the sinful nature. It's the freedom yeah. to live, you know. So it should be opening opportunities for us to explore, yeah. um, and and to do it in such a way that it's safe and honoring Him as opposed to in ways that are destructive because we're in His hand. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, man, thank you guys so much. This is a cool conversation. Um, like I said, maybe we'll do a part two. If you guys listening at home are enjoying this uh, content, please um, interact with us. You guys can find us on YouTube um, at Neighborhood Church of Cyprus or Neighborhood Church of Los Alamitos. You can also find the uh, content that we are curating, um, especially those uh, the videos that Bob Wilson has been making, the spoken word poetry videos with the Planted series. Phenomenal. We got a playlist there that you can find on our website, neighborhoodchurch.com. So check it out there. Um, you can also find us on Instagram and Facebook. You can also email us at connect at neighborhoodchurch.com. That's C-O-N-N-E-C-T at neighborhoodchurch.com. If there's any topics you're curious that we might uh, talk about, you can suggest it there. Otherwise, God bless you guys, and we pray that God would revive your soul. <laughs>